Let's do a, uh, it, that was recording. That the countdown means of recording. So um, first thing first, uh, we are going to um, have uh, a, a review of what arrays were and, and just take a look at it and see what we meant when we were talking about an array. So when you are talking about an array, we said whenever you are actually creating an array. So if I actually say over here, integer a10, if I do something like this, and I set it to, to certain values, say I set them from 10 to uh, 100. So if I create an array like this, what happens behind the scene, kind of, is that uh, your, um, after the program is written, um, uh, the program kind of reserves a piece of memory in its executable, okay? And if this is the memory that we have uh, that our program is in right now, within that program, uh, a piece of memory will be uh, uh, reserved for those 10 integers. Um, and going through like one by one, so th this is going to be one, uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So we have ten integers, and then uh, we're going to have uh, another piece of thing created for us that is a pointer. Um, that pointer is a pointer of type of the array. So the array is integer. This is going to be a pointer to integer, and it's going to be pointing right to the beginning of the array. Okay? And doing so, and the name of this pointer, we said the name of the pointer would be uh, A, right? Are we okay with that? Any problem down to here? That's what we said arrays are essentially. Okay? So, having said that, having said that, um, I can say that A uh, holds the address of beginning of those 10 integers in memory. Um, when we were talking about, when you were doing the quiz and you started about more input and output stuff, um, we had two different types of things, percent %u for unsigned integers and percent %p for pointers. Remember that? Okay, so percent %u, when we say unsigned integers, essentially it's, a, it's an integer that cannot go negative. Okay, number of students in a class. Uh, an unsigned integer is a perfect example of that. You never have minus one, minus three students in a class. You either have none, that is zero, or you have many students in a class. Number of, I don't know, Bottles on a conveyor when it's going to get filled with whatever, okay, or number of buckets, number, number of things, or um, sequence number of certain things. These things like the third row in this classroom, it, it can never go. Uh, this is, this is this, uh, row number zero, number one, number two, and number three. It cannot go row number minus one. It doesn't make sense, okay? And that's why the addresses in memory are all done that way. Um, now, we learned that we have a percent %p2. Remember that? Percent %p. And percent %p essentially is to print something uh, using, um, um, I'll, I'll print it right now and you'll see it. So, so now, if I, if I actually do something like this, if I actually say printf uh, percent %u, and I will put over here backslash n, and I'm going to print a, okay? If I do something like this, it is going to tell me at which address in the memory those 10 integers are setting. Okay? And it, so if I run this program, you will see that it's going to show that number. You see that number? If you count from the beginning of my memory, 0, 1, 2, 3, and go up to that point, that is 2,095,788, it goes, that's the number of uh, that's the sequence number of very first byte that starts my, my array of integers, okay? And because 
the program gets executed every single time. Your program sits somewhere else in memory. It's not always at the same place. So many programs. This program, you see, this program is running right now. You see all this stuff over here, the taskbar, the Visual Studio, everything that you see on a screen, there are programs running right now. And it's gonna, one of them gets executed, the other one gets moved somewhere. Like many different things are happening in the computer. That's why every single time this, is, this program runs, that number is going to be something different. It never comes at the same thing because every single time your program sits in a new place in memory, and therefore the address changes. But throughout your program, when the main is going from the beginning to the end, the number remains the same because it won't change. As soon as your program ends and gets re-executed, because it goes somewhere else in memory, it's going to be in some other place. Are we okay with this? Now, to see what is the difference between percent %p and percent %u, percent %p and percent %u, and I'm going to show a over here. That's essentially the hexadecimal version of what you had over there. So as you see, this address that my uh, integer array is sitting at, the, the hexadecimal version of it is this one. So essentially, uh, it's kind of a percent %x. With percent %x, you don't have any leading zeros at the beginning. So if I put percent %x, comma, percent capital X, and that one, and print A four times, the outcome is going to be essentially this. So the one that is lowercase x shows the hexadecimal in lowercase, you see? The one that is uppercase, it's uppercase. When you say pointer, it actually puts exactly the size of an integer because that's the size of a, uh, an address in memory, right? So it puts, fills it with zero at the left. And when I put percent %u, I actually see the integer number for it that I can understand easily. Are we okay with this? Now, So that's address of array int a, okay? And this is hex, and this is hex. This is pointer, this is address, and this is in decimal. Okay, so decimal. Okay, so one more time just to see what I meant. So address of A, it hex is this one. That's, um, that's pure address, and this is uh, a, a regular integer, okay? Or I can, uh, it's actually more understandable if I do it like this. So in here I'm going to say pure, and in here I'm going to say integer. So, yeah, so the address of int a in hex, hex pure, and that one. Are we okay with this? All right? All right. Now, I'm going to say over here printf address of a2. I want to see where a2 is in memory. So that's going to put percent %u over there, and address of a u will be address of a2, right? And that's going to show me exactly where the second element is in memory, all right? Now I'm going to put over here a pause. Okay, so it stops right over there, and then I'm going to print it another time. But this time, I'm going to print address of A3. And let's comment that. So when I put address of A and I print A by itself, A holds the address of beginning. Life is beautiful. It's the beginning of the array. Is that correct? When I say address of A2, so it's 0, 1, 2, it's going to give me the address of third element in memory. Right? Then it's going to stop. Wait for a enter thing that I enter, and then it's going to show me the address of A3, the next one. Are we okay with that? So let's do this. So I'm going to run this program now. 
Now this value is an integer, okay? So A2, A2 sits at that address. Can anybody tell me what is the next number that's going to get printed when I hit enter? What is the last three digits? 813. Everybody's okay with 813? Anybody have any objection to 813? 813 is good? You don't know. Let's analyze it. Let's analyze it. So the address of the, the third element is 812, correct? Address is the sequence number of the byte, correct? So every byte goes to the next number, is that correct? Now what is size of an integer? Four, correct? It's four bytes, correct? So if it's four, if I put three, how, it's going to be halfway through the deck, one quarter of the next one, right? So that's not going to one quarter further, so that's not right. It has to go four further, correct? And that's how a pointer is different with an integer, an unsigned integer. See? Okay? So, so address of an integer automatically goes four further when you add one to it. What do I mean by that? Let's do something like this. I'm going to take it a little further. So we understand that how, what happened over here, right? Now, please take a look at this. I'm going to do something nuts. So I'm going to say integer pointer p. Not in here. Let's do it somewhere else. Let's save this. Zero, 01. Get out of here. Zero, 01. Um, address of array. And elements. Wow. Okay, it's a big name. All right. So let's take that one out. I'm going to do something kind of nuts. What I'm going to do is this. I'm going to say integer pointer P and a double pointer D. Okay? Now in here, I'm going to put 8. And in here, I'm going to put 8. They are integers, right? We know that. We mentioned early at the beginning of the semester, well, when, when we were talking about pointers, we said pointers are nothing but integer values. The difference is that the, they are designed to hold the address of something. Okay? So integer pointer P, integer double pointer D. I don't know why they put that one D and that one P, but whatever. Okay? So that D is supposed to, it means the target of D is supposed to be a double, right? Now the target of P is supposed to be an integer. So now if I actually print those values, printf, and I print them as an integer, uh, unsigned integer, percent %u, so I'm going to say int address, and this one is a double address, okay? And I'm going to show over here p and d. Everybody's okay with this? What, it, what it's going to show, it's going to be no mystery. It's going to show 8 and 8. <laughs> There's no rocket size. I put 8 and I'm printing 8. There's no process happening, no calculation, nothing. So when I actually do this, control F5, three years later, what, hap what gets printed over here is that the int address is 8, the double address is 8, right? Are we okay down to here? Now what's going to happen next, make the pointers kind of make sense. I'm going to say P++. And I'm going to say D++. One farther. One farther. So I'm going one farther. So I'm going left one. I, I go one. I do one forward. Okay. So. In arithmetic, when we do one P++, plus plus, it's supposed to be 9, correct? But compiler knows that the target of P is an integer. How does it know? Because it's a freaking integer pointer, right? And it knows the target of D is supposed to be a double, right? So when I say add to the address of P, it means go to next 
integer, right? Which means how many it has to add? Four. What is size of a double? Eight. So if I add one to D, it's going to add eight. So if I actually run this beautiful program of mine, this one's going to be 12, that one's going to be 16. And that's how C language keeps track of what's sitting where in memory. That's why every single pointer that you are creating, although they are all the same, you have to mention what type of a pointer. So it's nuts, but if I have something like this, say in here I have struct student, and in here I put int, um, what, number of uh, semester, uh, then I'm going to put double GPA, and then I'm going to put character name 40, okay? So, okay? So now if I actually create over here, uh, GPA, uh, that's 8, that's 12, 12. Um, uh, I want to make, let's make the total 40. So uh, 12, 40, uh, how much does it remain? 28, right? Right, so I have 8, 4, and 28, right? Are we okay with that? All right. So in here, I'm going to say, I'm going to make this one. I'm going to say struct student pointer, and I'm going to put over here S, and I'm going to make it 40, right? So I'm going to have a printf over here, printf student address, percent U, Okay, plus one. <laughs> that that makes more sense. That that makes more sense. Plus one. Okay. So that's student address, not forty. I'm gonna actually put over there S, and in here I'm gonna say. S plus 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 one, okay? Exactly the same thing, and I run this, and the result is going to be 80, because the size of the structure is 40. If, I, if, I, if I'm pointing to a student, and I want to go to the next student, I have to jump 40 bytes, okay? Yes? We did, right at the beginning. How? Eight and eight. What do you mean? Oh, two different pointers to the same address? Yeah. Yes, you can. Yeah. <laughs> I'm putting it over there. I have integer P8. You cast it. That's why you know what casting is. But if you have it, you cannot use it at the same time. The question that you ask is kind of crazy. So say I'm writing a program on a very short in space. I need an integer, right? I'm sorry that you asked this question. I have to answer the question. But if you get confused, ignore what I just said, OK? Let's say I'm writing a program, and I'm very much short in space, OK? And I have a, a three-character string that I need to use. For example, I have a small character I want to use, the, uh, a grade, so like B plus, something like that. I want to hold something, something like that in there, OK? So I need a string that is only four characters. Three characters plus one is four and I need an integer. And I'm never going to use these two things at the same time. So I'm, when I'm using the integer, I'm sure that the thing is not used. And when I'm done with the integer, now I need a string. And they are completely separate from each other. If that's the case, I can create an integer a. Then I can create a character pointer holding the address of that integer and cast it. So when I use the a, it looks at that piece of memory as a four-character string, and I can use it as a four-character string. But if you lose that four-character string, you are ruining that integer, because it overwrites that integer with garbage. And if you put something in that integer, your, your string is going to be doomed, 
because it's going to be over. So, yes, you can, but why? Okay, that's, that's the power of C. When we say C is a powerful language, that's what we are talking about. You can do stuff like this if you want to, but you have to have a very good reason for it. Okay? Very, very good reason to look at the same piece of memory in different ways. It's your memory. It's your memory. You want me to? Do, I don't want to do it and waste the time of. But you can do that. Do it at home and try it. Okay, do it at home and try. Have a double, and have a string of seven characters. Put something in it, then read the double. You're gonna see it's big garbage in it. So you set that double to one, two, three, four, five. You print it. Life is beautiful. And then you set that string to something else, and you see the double went down the garbage, because you are using the same piece of memory for two different things. All right? All right. So let me pause. Recording. So that's how the pointers actually work with respect of being an integer. The only difference a pointer has with an integer is that when you add one or two units to it, it always multiplies that value to the size of the target. So if you want to go three further, it's going to go three integers further, three characters further, three short integers further, or three students further. All right? OK, so that's that. And finally, oh, not this one. So I'm going to bring back this. OK. Having said all these things, if I say printf percent %d and target of a, what is going to get printed? These are all questions for the test, by the way. What is going to get printed? What is the output of this program? Uh, forget about that structure thing. We don't want it. Huh? It's 10. Are we OK with this? Are we OK with this? OK. It's 10. OK. So it's 10. Now, if I do this, What's going to be the output of the second line, line 7? It's still 10, right? I'm saying from A, go 0 further, correct? Now, if I do this, what's going to happen? What's going to get printed? What's going to get printed? 20. Why? Because I'm telling Go from address A one integer further, which means four bytes further. Now go to the target, it becomes 20. Right? Hence, the index of the arrays starting from zero. Essentially, when you write A0, it gets translated to this. When you write A1, it gets translated into this one, and it keeps going like that. This is called pointer notation for arrays. So sometimes you see some geeks want to show off. They do like that. When, you write, when they write an array, they access it that way. I don't know why. Cuckoo, but they do it. Yes? Uh, the parentheses because of the, the Yeah, because I want to first calculate the address and then go to the target of address. Mm -hmm. If I say asterisk A plus 1, then, it be, then it's going to, let's do that. <laughs> 21, right? No, actually 11. That's actually, see, this is a beautiful interview question. I'll put these two and I said, tell me what's the thing, right? So now if I run this beautiful program of mine, this is what I'm going to get, 10, 10, 20, and 11. So the first one, target of A, it's address of the beginning. A plus 0 is still address of the beginning. A plus 1 target becomes address of the second one. And if I add 1 to the value of the beginning, it becomes 11. Are we okay with this? Questions? Suggestions? Objections? 
No? All right. And we have that. Okay. So we are clear with. <clears throat> oh, oh, <clears throat> we are clear with. Sorry, I lost my voice. We are clear with arrays. We understand what how arrays work. We understand how pointers work. We understand how pointer notations of arrays are, and all the story of these good things. Now. Another thing that I wanted to talk about was this one. So, so let's actually save this as 0, 03 um, array pointer notation. All right, so that's a pointer notation for arrays. What else am I going to do now? Come on, come on, come on. Um, So, next thing, what if I want, I don't want 10 integers, I want two arrays of five integers instead. It's essentially 10 integers, but I want two arrays of five integers. Like you want to have three arrays, you want to have 50 arrays. If you want to have something like that, what do you do? It's pretty simple and straightforward. When you create and a multi-dimensional array, I'm a, in this case, it's going to be a two-dimensional array. When you created something like that happens. So this is your array now, OK? And uh, obviously, you divide it by two. That's one. So this is the first one, second one. And then you have five over here. That's one, two. Three, four, and five. Okay? Are we okay with this? Now, this will be row zero because everything starts from zero. We know that. This will be row one, and this is column zero, column one, column two, and three, and four. Are we okay with this? So if I want to actually write what the, uh, the index of each uh, row is, what I can do is, oh, is that too small? So this will be 0, 0, correct? This one will be 0, 1, right? Row 0 column one, this one will be zero, two, and zero, three, and zero, four, correct? So those are the indexes of those things. And if I come down here, for this one, it's going to be row one, column zero, correct? And then we're going to have row one, one, and then we're going to have row 1, 2, and then we're going to have row 1 and column 3, and then row 1 and column 4. Anybody have any problem with that? Right? And if we actually put values in these things, let's say we want to put the exact same values in here, the values inside those things would be something like, so I'll put them over here. So this is going to be 10, right? Oh, why that one is blue? So let's change the color. Oh, it changed the color of the other one too? Bad boy. So let's change it to this one or this one. So that will be 10. That will be, this will be 20. This will be 30, 40, 50, right? And... I come down here, in here I'm going to have 60, 70, 80, 90, and 100. 
And how do I implement this? How do I actually write it over there? It is quite simple. It's the exact same way you actually define an array. All you need to do is to write over here integer, and let's call that one b. So if this is b, you're going to have the exact same situation, which means at certain position over here, you are going to have to have a pointer called b, okay? And that pointer b points to the beginning of the array, okay? And we call that one b, okay? So no difference, it's exactly the same. So I have integer b, I need two integers, and I want each of them to have five elements, okay? So if I want to initialize it, how do I do it? First, the initialization of the array. So I have one array, right? This array has two elements. The first element is an array, and the second element is an array too, correct? And each element has, each element has five elements of its own, and that's 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50, correct? And then I'll come over here. I have 60, 70, 80, 90, and 100. Are we okay with this? All right, so now array B has those values. And if I want to access the values, I'll do it exactly like I did for the other ones. So if I want to print row 1, element 2, then I have to say printf percent %d. And in here, I have to say, so this is row 1, element 2, right? So that's going to be uh, b, 1, and 2. Are we okay with this? And if I print it out, you'll see that's exactly what you're going to get. It's 280. It's not 280. It's 80 because I didn't put anything in front of it. Let me fix that. So that 2 has to get a column thingy over here, like a column and a space. And that's going to be that. And if I want to go through them one by one and print them out, I can simply have uh, two uh, uh, indexes over there and say four. I set set to zero, I less than two, and I plus plus, and then I'm going to have four, J set to zero, J less than five, and J plus plus, and then I'm going to say printf, and in here I'm going to put percent D and a space, uh, I have three, so I'm going to put three D, and I'm going to left justify it. And, and a space in between, and I'm going to say over here, B, I, and J. And as soon as it prints the first row, I'm going to go to new line. And in here, I'm going to go to new line to end all the things. And when I print it, when I run it, it's going to go through the first row, and then the second row, and it's going to print it like that. Are we okay with this? All right. If I wanted this array to be 3, it would be very easy. You just add the third one over here. So it's going to be 10, 20, 30, 40, 150. So what do I add? I add to this one or this one? I add to this one. So it becomes B3, correct? Now I have three rows and two columns. And if I just add to this value, I'm going to print all three of them. And this is what I get. Are we okay with this? Are we okay? Right? And this is how two-dimensional arrays work. You can organize your code like this and have a two-dimensional array. So the question was, so B is only one address, how can I have two? So it simulates it. So what happens essentially when you have like this, uh, B35, okay? You have one B that is the address of everything, beginning of everything. Then you have B0, B1, B2, B, B2. So these are essentially three pointers to integers. That point to 
beginning of each array. So essentially, B's, B1 is a pointer to an integer. B2 is a pointer to an integer. B3 is a pointer to an integer. B31 is an integer. Sorry, B21 is an integer. B03 is an integer. But B0 by itself is a pointer. Are we okay with this? Are we okay? And so pause. Okay, so the question was if, uh, so B with first index together, the, the part that is highlighted as blue, it's actually an integer pointer. So if I do this, if I say printf percent D, and I'll put target of B2, then what's going to get printed? Let's put it over here. I'm going to address of B1, uh, uh, target of B1. If I put something like this, what's going to get printed? What's going to get printed over here? 10 is going to get printed, right? Oh, actually, uh, yeah, 60. Yeah, it's add, yeah, it's index 1, 0, and essentially 60 is going to get printed. Yeah. Right? Are we okay with this? All right. All right, so, and that's two-dimensional arrays, and we are clear, and we know exactly what's going on, so I'm going to save that. Let me just run it first, make sure it runs, control F5. There you go, and that's 60, so we know. Okay. And we're gonna go two-dimensional arrays. What are we gonna save, 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 uh, Alt F, uh, zero, four, two-dimensional array. Any questions down to here? Any questions down to here? Yes? Uh, you said the array start at zero, right? Mm -hmm. So for the int b square bracket 3, can, can we just put... Uh, there is no b squared. Square, oh, go ahead one more time. Uh, so the int b mm -hmm. square uh, 3, mm -hmm. would, would it be okay to put 2 there? Do you start at zero? Okay. <clears throat> you say, I want three cookies. Mm -hmm. And then you number them 0, 1, 2. If you say, I want two cookies, they're going to give you two, <laughs> not three. That's the number you're requesting. Okay. You're saying, I want three. And when you get three, the first one will be zero, second one will be one, third one will be two. So you have to mention how, you, how many you want, and then it's going to be indexed from zero. Okay? Good question. Anything else? Are we okay? Now, why did we learn two-dimensional arrays? Are we crazy? Why we taught that, this thing in, in IPC 144? The reason is that we need that. I'm going to wipe these things up because we don't need this anymore. So I'm just going to say clear all. Okay, so that's gone. So why do we need that? We learned that we could hold array of 20 integers, right? Well, what if I told you I want an array of 20 names? A name is a character array, correct? How can you hold 20 names? It's impossible. To hold 20 names, you need to have 20 array of characters or 20 strings, correct? And for that, you have to write a code like this. So if I want, say, 40 names, I have to actually write something like character name 40 and then 61 characters each, 60 characters each. So that's essentially 40 strings of 60 character and one for each for null. So now if I want to read 40 names, let's say I have a file and it has few things in it, so I'm just going to add it over here to resources so we can see it. So let's say I have a, a, a file that holds items that we have. So the first one is the SKU, the second one is the uh, name of the product, the third one is the price, and the fourth one, it, it, it's, it's if it's taxed or not. Okay? Say I want to only read those 20 things and put it, uh, 
take those uh, names and put it in an array of names and deal with it somehow. How do I deal with it? How can I do that? To do something like that, I have to, I have, to have the array and I have to read these things. I know how to read those things from a file. It's pretty simple. We have done that 50 times. So I'm going to do it over here again. So we know if I want to read those things from a file, I read it from a file. So I'm going to say open the file for read and I'm going to make sure that I'm going to close it. So the file pointer FPTR whole, uh, will, will be the handle for items.txt and I'm going to read them one by one. But because in this uh, uh, file I have an SKU that I don't want, I have a price that I don't want, I have a, a, a tax that I don't want. So for that I'm going to create some junk variables. So I'm going to say I'm going to say I have uh, uh, an integer junk and a double D junk, okay? And then I'm going to write a scanf, and that scanf is going to read from the, from the, from the file, but, and just, I'm going to put those things that I don't want in junk. So I'm going to say the first one is an integer, the second one is a name, third one is a double, that is the price and the tax. So if the first one goes in junk, I don't want it, it reads and puts in there, then it reads the name that I, the way I want it, Name I, I don't know which one yet, so it has to be in a loop. Somehow, I'm going to put it in there, and then I'm going to read the, the other one in djunk, that is a double, and then one and zeros again in the junk. So this is going to read everything in the scanf. Now, I want to read it one by one, so I'm going to say while. So that I think it needs to be an index. I have to read it one by one. So I'm going to say while, and I'm going to set it to zero initially. I'm going to say while this f scan f that I'm reading is equal to 4, correct? And it's reading the name. Correct? Then I'm going to say i++. So it's going to keep reading until it's done. Correct? And put them one by one in name. Do I need to put an ampersand beside it? No, because name i is a pointer to a character. It is a string. I do not need to put an ampersand beside it. Okay? So that's essentially it. So it's going to say address of uh, junk, name i, and djunk. So it's going to read the names and put it one by one over there. And if I want to show them one by one, I can simply have an integer j over here. J over here and print them one by one. Say comma separated. So all right, so it's gonna print them comma separated. I'm closing the file over here. I should not. I should close the file right over here after I read, because after that I don't need to do anything with it. And then I print them that one, and I'm going to say uh, return to this. I'm going to say printf backslash n. All right. So essentially, it's going to read the things one by one and put it in name. So I'm going to go through it. Let's take a look at it and see how it works. We know what the items are. I'm just going to close it so we can see this better. So let's run it one by one and see how it's going to read it into the uh, two-dimensional two array of characters, which is essentially uh, the integer array. Wait, uh, that one goes over there, this one comes over here. All right, so now name has all junks in it. When you look at the two-dimensional array, you will see that they're all junk, right? Then it comes in, opens the file, reads the first one, and the second, and the third. Now if I look at the name, you'll see that the first one is fresh fish, soft Kleenex, and tide, ultra tide, right? So these are the values that I read. And it keeps going until scatter can't read four, and that's when everything's going to get printed. So essentially, the output of the program will be something like this. Comma separated value of the names that I had in, a, in the file. Now, remember that I, find, that, that I told you find the mistake in... Uh, in uh, we have find a mistake in, in the test. Now, if I told you, it's a very small little thing, but it, 
consider it as a break. So you're going to go for a break and come back and, we and continue. Tell me what's the mistake with this thing. This program is supposed to print comma separated values uh, of names in a file. Something's wrong with it. If you can tell me what it is, nice. And if you want to go for a break, you can go for a break. I'm going to pause this and please remind me to start it afterwards. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Yeah, so now we are actually reading the SKUs2 as a parallel array to the names. And instead of a while loop, we have a for loop. It's exactly what we had before. We are reading integers in the SKU, string in the name, float in the double junk, and uh, the, the, the price in the double junk, and is, if it's taxed or not in the junk, and if it's equal to 4, uh, I'll, I'll go keep going, and if it's not, I'll stop, and that's how it's going to read all of those things. Now, we, the reason I'm doing this to, is to talk about algorithms. Okay? What the devil is an algorithm? Algorithm is essentially um, a specific way of doing the certain things to reach to, a, to the goal of a task. Okay? Now, the programs that you are writing, they're not algorithms. Because it's just specifically for your task, and that's it. No one is not going to use, uh, is going to use it. But if I told you, this is how you search through names. That's language independent. It's not C. It's not Pascal. It's not, I don't know, Python. It's not Perl. It's language independent. I'm telling you, to read, to search, you have to read them one by one, compare it to that one. If it's a success, yeah, yeah. So I'm giving you certain... St uh, steps of doing this, and you can get those steps and modify it, translate it in the language of the favorite language that you have, and you have accomplished the goal of what you want to do. So, common tasks that to provide solution for common tasks and study them and make them work the best you can so others can use these are algorithms. Search is one of them. We have done it. We have done linear search, worst type of search. It's an algorithm because it tells you how to search, but it's the most awful one. Why? Because if the value is non-existent, essentially you have to read the, everything in there to know that it, it doesn't exist. It's very expensive. If I have, what, 30 million, 36 million in Canada, and I'm looking for a social insurance number, I have to go one by one, read 36 million records to find it, to, to give you the message that social insurance number doesn't exist. That takes a long time, right? So that's not a good algorithm. An algorithm it is, not a good one though, okay? Now, algorithms are written for many different things. Search is like, and one way of doing search is called a binary search. And a binary search is a very cool way of doing it. First, they lay everything in order. So they... All the social insurance numbers, they start from the smallest to the biggest one, okay? Then they go to the middle of the thing. So they go to 15th million record. Take a look at the SIN number. Is it bigger than yours or smaller than the one that you're searching for? If it's smaller, then they're going to go the first half. They cut it in half. And then they search in that half. If it's greater, so they keep doing the search half, 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 half until it pinpoints. If it reaches to the center and it finds it, beautiful. If it doesn't find it, so, but the, and the amount of search that you are doing is much less, okay? But for this search to be successful, you need to have a sorted uh, value of information, okay? A sort, sorted um, uh, a series of information. Now, that brings us to sorting. How do we actually sort? How does the sorting work? Sorting has many different algorithms too. One of the most popular ones that they teach everywhere is called a bubble sort. Why they call it bubble? Because the person who wrote it felt like the sorting looks like bubbles going up, like when the bubbles go up on a, uh, in, in water, it looks like that. I'll show it to you if you see the bubble or not. I don't know. But, <laughs> but that's, that's why it's called. It's called a bubble sort. Now, um, I'm going to tell you exactly how bubble sort works. Pretty simple. And we're going to write it for this, for this uh, uh, tell me, parallel array of ours to see how actually we can sort them based on SKU or based on uh, uh, the names or whatever we want. <clears throat> so, so, 
So first of all, let me So, say this is my array. I have an array of six things over here, and I want to sort it ascending. Okay, I want to do an ascending sort, which means it starts from smaller, it goes to higher. I want to do a bubble sort on it. How do you do a bubble sort on this one? This is how you do it. You compare neighboring elements, and if they don't match the way you want it to be sorted, you just fix that one. For example, Six and four, is it sorted properly? No. So you just exchange them. You put the four over there, you put six over here. Then you go to the next one. Six and two, is it sorted properly? No. So you get that one, and you put the biggest one at right, and you go over here. Six and six, is it sorted properly? Yes. So I'm going to go to the next one. I'm not going to do any change. Six and four, is it sorted properly? No. So I'm going to fix that, and I'm going to put the 6 over here. 6 and 1, is it sorted properly? No, so I'm going to put it that way. As you see, one, one, one traverse, one uh, pass through the sort, and you guarantee that the highest value is pushed to the back, right? So there is no need to go all the way through the second time. The second time you go one less. Battery is running low. Didn't I connect? Oh, I connected to adapter, but I didn't put it in the thing. So there we go. That's better. All right. So it didn't stop anything, did it? No, it's recording. Life is beautiful. Okay, good. So, so the second time I'm doing, I'm going to do one less. Okay. And a question for an element of six, how many times I compared the two? to be able to do one pass. I had six elements. How many comparison did I do? Five, right? Because it's one, two, three, four, and five, right? Now, the next time I need to do only four times. Now I'm going to check. Four and two, is it sorted? No, I'll fix that. Four and six, is it sorted? Yes, so I don't do anything. Six and four, is it sorted? No, so I'll fix it. Six and one, is it sorted? No, so I'll do that. The second pass is done. Now the next one is going to be only three comparison, three of them. Two and four, sorted? Yes. Four and four, sorted? Yes. Four and one, sorted? No, so I'll fix that. The next one, two and, four, two and four sorted? No, four and one sorted? So I'm going to go over here. And the last one, I only need to do it only once. Now, two and one sorted? No, two comes over here, one comes over there, and I have a sorted array in hand. OK? From small to big. Are you OK with that? So essentially, I looped through to do my uh, comparison, right? How many times? Number of elements minus one, right? So five times I went through it, right? And every single time I went one less than the previous time. So we can do that very easily, OK? So let's do that. I want to write a sort, first of all, Let's uh, write, write a function to print the items, because I want to print them, right? So before doing that, let's do a print items. To print the items in here, I have to, what do I have to pass? I have to say print items, right? And for print items, I have to pass the SKU, the address of the array of uh, uh, the SKUs, and then I have to pass the array of names, right? Correct? Now let's write the prototype for it. So in here, I'm going to say void print items. The first one is an integer array, so integer SKU, and I'm going to call it S, like that. Now the second one is going to be a character 
name, right? Now, I want to pass this array to that one, correct? Based on what I said, see, when it's a single dimension array, I don't need to mention how many, right? Because they have, I have so many integers, and I know that C doesn't understand what is the length of an array. It just starts from the beginning, and it goes up to whatever it goes, right? So for the second one, what do I do? The rule is you put exactly what you have. If it's a two-dimensional array, you put two of them, three. You, you just copy that and put it over there and remove the first one. That's it. Why do I need to put the 61 over there? Because the function needs to know every time I'm adding one to the index of name how many characters it has to jump to go to the second array. So I have to mention 61. If I don't mention 61, it doesn't know what are the size of the chunks. And that's why, that's why you do it. So if it's a three-dimensional array you're passing, is if it's a six-dimensional array that you're passing, you put them all, you only remove the first one. The rest must have everything intact. Okay? So that is passed, so I have the name. And of course, I don't know how many arrays of 61. I just know the width of each is 61. How many of them? No idea. So I have to mention how many, and I'm going to say int num, and that's going to give me the number of things that I have. Are we okay with this? Any questions down to here? Printing them is a piece of cake. We've done that 55,000 times, so we'll do it again. So I start from zero, and I go up to num, and I print them one by one, yada, yada, yada. Everything's done, right? So that we don't have any problem with. Are we okay? Now, sorting them. Sorting the values, because I know because it's an array, I only need to pass its name. And if I modify the array, it's going to actually change it. One problem I have in this print items, again, it's your test. What's wrong with that function? Am I recording? Yes, I'm recording. No, no, no. The, 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 the array is good. The, everything's good, but there is a there is a problem. There is a problem that is not a problem. It runs perfectly, but there is a design problem that opens it to bugs. Yes, how do we prevent it? Whenever you are passing a pointer, if you are not in that logic supposed to change it, it's your duty to make that pointer a constant. Remember that. It works if you don't do it. But if you don't do it, and by mistake you make some change over there, it's going to create such an awful bug that it's going to be very difficult to, to fix. So always, always, always make it a constant when it's not needed. Now, when I'm sorting, the signature is exactly the same thing, absolutely no difference. The difference is that because in sorting, I want to rearrange the values that I have, I cannot make them a constant. So for sorting based on SKU, let's say, I'm passing the SKU and I have to pass the parallel of the names because if I swap the values of, uh, in a comparison, if I swap the values of SKU, I have to swap the values of names too, right? So to do that, now I have to write the loop. So I have to first, how many times I have to, how many times I have to do this thing? Uh, the, the testing passes. I have to do num minus one, right? I have to do num minus one. So I'm going to say four, um, integer uh, i, integer j. So I have to say for i set to zero, i less than num minus one because I have to do it num minus one times. We saw that. So this is the number of, the number of times that I have to keep back, go back and compare, go back and compare, go back and compare. Now I have to do the actual comparisons. So I'm doing a loop, right? So when I'm doing the loop, I'm going to say 4i set to j set to 0, j less than. OK. Now. When I'm doing this time, every single time, the pass has to be one less than the previous time, correct? So the first time, when i is 0, okay, it has to do it all, go up to num minus 1. 
When i is 1, it has to go 1 less. When i is 2, it has to go 2 less. Because always the biggest one or the smallest one, depending on what I'm doing the search, it's going to be pushed on the back. So I have to say read, uh, uh, less than num minus i, because if it's the first one, it's 0, you do it all. If it's 1, you do 1 less. And minus 1 is for minus 1, because it's 1 less than the number of items. And I'll do j++. So this is where I have to do a comparison. In here, I have to say if, OK? Now I have to compare the neighboring SKUs. So if the SKU that I have over here, i, is, OK, how is it bad? I want to do ascending, right? If I want to do ascending, I have to check to see if it's not in order, which means if the first one is bigger than the second one, that's the bad one. I have to fix. Otherwise, I don't need to touch anything, right? So I'm going to say if SKU i, sorry, j, is, I have, a, oh, if, if s i is greater than s i plus, uh, j, sorry, 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 j. If SKU j is greater than SKU, uh, s j plus 1, this is where I have to do the swap, right? Correct? Now. I want to do the swap. I have three cups of, I have two cups of, two, two cups, right? One cup, I have chocolate milk in it, the other one I have coffee. I want to exchange the two. How can I do that? I need a third cup of coffee, third, third cup that is empty. I empty the first one, then I put the second one in first one, then I put the one that I emptied in that one back in here and I have it to take. So, so I need one variable to do so, right? So if I want to swap, integer s, I need an integer uh, temp value for it, right? So I'm going to call it int i temp, that is an integer temp, temp value, right? Now, to swap, I'm going to say that i temp value is sj because I want to swap the values. Now, sj, that is backed up now, I can set it to sj plus 1, so j plus 1 goes into j. And now that the j plus 1 is backed up, I can set j plus 1 to the temp value that I had over there. And the values are swapped, right? Now I want to swap the names. Each name could be up to how many characters? 60 characters. So I need a temp value for that. So in here I have to say character c temp or s temp. And it's going to be 61. And to do this, I need string header files. It's not a single value, it's an array. So I have to use the string header file to be able to actually to do this. So I have to say SDR copy, string copy, into STEMP, the value of name i, the j, sorry. Now name j is backed up. So I'm going to say str copy, string copy, into name j, the value of name j plus 1. And now that name j plus 1 is backed up, I'll copy back into uh, name j plus 1, the s temp that was the buffer for me to change this. Okay, these are actually, I could have called it iBuff actually, because the buffer essentially that you want to keep the stuff in it. Are we okay with this? Now this is supposed to sort everything for me, okay? And then print them out. So I can sort it, so I'm gonna say, so first let's, let's print it without sorting. So now in here I have to put the number of things and that's i. So, and now I print it before. And then I'm going to say printf, and I'm going to show a line. All right. And then I'm going to say sort. I'm going to put the SKU and name and I again over here and print them again to see if actually they are sorted or not. And if I run this beautiful program of mine, you will see that first I have the values like that, and then I have them like this, which they are perfectly sorted. Are we okay with this?
<clears throat> All right. I'm losing my voice, I think. All right. I have four minutes. I started something amazing in the other class that I don't have time to do it over here. I'm going to finish that thing, but go listen to the recording of the other one. After this, I actually created structures. We'll go, I'm going to do that in the next class that we are coming in. Yeah. In the next lecture, I'll do that. Uh, <clears throat> what I was saying is that this type of sorting is very expensive. Let me start it now. So I've done the walkthrough of how sorting is happening. Do the walkthrough over here with a small file. Only put four things in it and go through it and see how it works just to see how the process is happening. It's a good thing to test. Why this is bad, okay? Let's actually put this thing in here. I'm going to call it 06 uh, expensive bubble sort. Why expensive? Because just think about it. Think, what if it was 30 million people in here? You know, every single time keeps switching, swapping the names, copying, and it's only two things for heaven's sake now. Just imagine if I had a structure of things. Like if I actually was re if I actually was reading all these things through structure, into a structure, the way I did it in the other class. So let me actually run it over there just to show you what I started over there. So essentially, I, got, I copied the example that we had for uh, reading a file, and I just converted it to this one. So I said product SKU price name text. So the read product that we had with Scanf, I just read the, this product in it that has an extra text in it at the end. So it input file, reads the thing, and it's exactly the same thing. So it reads the integer, string, price, and a text, and puts it in the proper places, and it returns four. If it's equal to four, it returns true. It's exactly the same thing. So read product is that. Print product prints it, and print title is printing the title. So everything's beautiful. The only thing cool about the printout for the title is that at the end, because text is zero or one, I want to print it nicely. I'm not going to put three, zero or one for text. I'm going to put yes or no. So I'm using the question mark operator over here. I'm going to say if text, so if text is one, it's going to print yes. If it's zero, it's going to print no. Okay, so it's going to actually print something cool. And it's percent %s for printing tax, not percent %d. And then in here, I, I'm going to have 100 structures over here. So instead of having a parallel array, what I'm going to have will be actually a structure of products. Now, these products... Each of them is what? 4, 4, 8, and 41. You know how many characters are there? And if you want to switch, you have to do uh, that many uh, uh, information transfer between memory. So if it's completely in opposite direction, you know how many copying has to be done? Very expensive. So how can we actually sort these values? How is it? How can we actually sort the values without touching the data itself? How can we leave the data scrambled as is, but have a sorted view of it? It's very simple, actually. How do we do it? We create different array of pointers to, to this structure. So I'm going to create. If I want it sorted by name and SKU at the same time, I'm going to say I have a, an array of 100 uh, product pointers, but it's SKU. Product pointers, I'm going to call this one by name. And I make originally, when I read it, I make each pointer to point to the elements of array individually. Now the pointers are pointing to the elements, right? So I run through it and I do the bubble sort, but instead of switching the values of product, I'm just going to switch the pointers. Because, so essentially, it's showing like this, the two pointers, then it becomes like this. So when I sort the 
pointers that are pointed them, each of them is only four bytes. Nothing. I simply, so I'm going to hold it, the sort, the sorted order for SKU in this pointer array and the other one in this name array. And if they want me to, if they want it to display it sorted by SKU, they pass the SKU by pointer. If they want to do by name, they pass by, by name. And they won't even touch the product there. They're going to leave it scrambled and bad as it was before with no change. We'll, we'll do this the next time you're coming in. Have yourself a beautiful, beautiful day. I think it stopped recording for some reason. Did it? No? Stop it.